my dear brothers and sisters even if jesus doesn't have time for anyone he will have time for you a repenting sinner he will speak to you personally if you are ready to come back he will speak to you if you are ready to repent of all your past sins it's very interesting to see jesus when he was going through torture in his body extreme pain even is he is about to breathe his last he saw his mother standing under the cross he saw his beloved disciple standing under the cross he saw mary magdalene who loved him so much standing under the cross but he didn't speak to any one of them but he spoke to his this sinner who repented and said truly i tell you today you will be with me in paradise my brothers and sisters let us read this word of god gospel luke chapter 23 verse 34 the word of god says then jesus said father forgive them for they do not know what they are doing and they cast lots to divide his clothing clothing my dear brothers and sisters during this holy adoration we are going to reflect about certain word of god which jesus spoke from the mount calvary certain words there are seven word of god there are seven sentences the seven last words of jesus from the mount calvary and let us reflect one by one some of them and the first one that jesus spoke from the mount calvary father forgive them they do not know what they are doing you know it is impossible to think that these human beings were doing such a terrible atrocities to jesus how can someone some human beings harm other human beings so much like this they tortured the body of jesus so badly they have beaten jesus flogged jesus so terribly they made fun of him even when jesus was bleeding and crying they spat on his face how can someone think of even spitting on someone else face how can someone who do such kind of terrible atrocities against another human being but these people including the authorities the jewish high priest and even the other elders of the communities they all insulted humiliated made jesus to carry the cross to the mount calvary and he went through such a terrible pain and rejection abandonment and when he was lying down on the cross jesus could open his eyes and see all his enemies standing under the cross with the weapons in their hands the sword spear and many other weapons the even the flogs and these are the same people who tortured jesus made him naked with even his flesh coming out of the cloth out of along with the cloth and jesus went through that terrible agony terrible pain if we were there in the place of jesus we would have cursed these people we would have complained to jesus we would even can't even think of looking at their faces because they hated us so much hated so much but what did jesus do jesus did which is humanly impossible jesus hanging on the cross looking at all those enemies who have tortured his body and he lifted his high eyes towards the heaven and cried and said father forgive them for they do not know what they are doing he justified his enemies he just accepted his enemies he pleaded for his enemies in front of his father he said father do not hurt them they do not know what they are doing i remember one incident some years ago one it came in the newspaper and also in the tv one son was attacking and hurting the mother and beating her thoroughly terribly seeing the cry of the mother the neighbors came running and started beating that son 
when the neighbor started beating that son this mother came in between and stopped all the neighbor saying don't beat him and she was ready to take all the beating for herself to protect her son who in fact tortured her so terribly and this is exactly what jesus was doing on mount calvary when the whole world especially the roman soldiers and the pharisees and sadducees were torturing jesus jesus was standing in between the humanity and god and pleading on behalf of the humanity and told the heavenly father forgive them father they do not know what they are doing they are beating me they are hurting me they are crucifying me because they do not know what they are doing forgive them please do not this is what jesus did he was pleading for you and for me even when we were torturing him jesus never accused us he never insulted us he never rejected us but he pleaded on behalf of us in front of the heavenly father on behalf of us right now as we are reflecting this word of god let's examine our conscience and see there are so many people who have hurt us wounded us rejected us insulted us let's read this word of god gospel of john gospel of luke chapter 23 verse 43 we read like this he replied truly let's read from verse 41 on onwards 41 and we indeed have been condemned justly one thief who was telling the other thief we indeed have been condemned justly for we are getting what we deserve for our deeds but this man has done nothing wrong verse 42 then he said jesus remember me when you come into your kingdom jesus remember me when you come into your kingdom verse 43 jesus replied truly i tell you today you will be with me in the paradise my dear brothers and sisters this is very interesting when jesus was going through extreme pain Jesus was able to find time to console the a console a sinner a thief a condemned man even when his own mother was standing under the cross he did not speak to his mother or any even his disciples he could not speak to him he didn't speak to john he didn't speak to mary magdalene he didn't speak to salome but he spoke to the repenting sinner from the mount calvary my dear brothers and sisters even if jesus doesn't have time for anyone he will have time for you a repenting sinner he will speak to you personally if you are ready to come back he will speak to you if you are ready to repent of all your past sins it's very interesting to see jesus when he was going through torture in his body extreme pain even is he is about to breathe his last he saw his mother standing under the cross he saw his beloved disciple standing under the cross he saw mary magdalene who loved him so much standing under the cross but he didn't speak to any one of them but he spoke to his this sinner who repented and said truly i tell you today you will be with me in paradise any repenting sinner will be always with jesus if you are ready to repent and say lord i'm so sorry is a bold step from the thief is a courageous step from the thief he knows he is unworthy he knows that he deserve this punishment he knows that he has committed terrible sins but in spite of that he was courageous enough to come to jesus and say jesus remember me when you come into the kingdom remember me when you come into your kingdom he didn't even say invite me to the kingdom he only said just remember me because he knows that he is unworthy to come into the kingdom 
Therefore, Jesus, he said, just remember me when you come into your kingdom. But Jesus said, you will be in the kingdom. You will be with me in the paradise. My dear brothers and sisters, it is an invitation for all the sinners who are ready to repent. If you are ready to repent and say, remember me, knowing the unworthiness and unholiness and uncleanness, if you are able to say, Lord, remember me, then the Lord will remember, not only remember, He will make sure that you are in the kingdom. He will never reject you. The Lord is healing somebody who has got terrible pain in the left side of your stomach and this side, side and terrible pain. The Lord is healing you right now. The Lord is also healing someone who is having wound in the body. The Lord is healing you completely of all the wounds that you have in your body is completely healed. Unhealed wounds are healed. Right now, the Lord is blessing you. Praise the Lord. When from Mount Calvary, hanging on the cross, Jesus saw his mother and his disciple whom he loved, standing beside her, he said to his mother, Woman, here is your son. And then verse 27, then he said to the disciple, Here is your mother. And from that hour, the disciple took her into his own home. My dear brothers and sisters, from the Mount Calvary, when he was dying, Jesus is entrusting Mother Mary to his beloved disciple. And he calls Mother Mary woman because she is the mother of all the living now. Some years ago, thousands of years ago, in the garden of paradise, there was another woman whom God called the mother of all the living. That was Eve. And this woman, God called woman. You are the mother of the whole, the living. But she unfortunately became mother of all the dead through the sin she committed, through which the whole humanity came under the shadow of death. And she became, though she was initially mother of the whole living, all the living, but she became mother of all the dead who are dead to the sin. But once again here, there is another woman who became with a full consent and full will and full obedience to God. She became the mother of all the living. And that is why Jesus called Mother Mary woman. And he is entrusting all his disciples to her and said, here is your son. And Jesus, after that, this this disciple took her into his own home. My dear brothers and sisters, Jesus is entrusting his mother to us. It is the duty of the disciples to take Mother Mary in your own homes, in our own homes. Mother Mary should be there in every home. Mother Mary is given by Jesus so that we may keep her in our own home and welcome her in our own home and she should be in charge of in charge of our homes and that is why jesus said here is your mother let's thank the lord almighty who is present here right now let's glorify the lord who is present here right now and thank him for giving us his mother as our mother Let's read Gospel of Matthew chapter 27 verse 46. Matthew chapter 27 verse 46. And about three o'clock Jesus cried with a loud voice. Eli, Eli, lama samakthani. That is my God, my God. Why have you forsaken me? My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? My dear brothers and sisters, in fact, Jesus was reciting the psalm 
22 we read like these in the psalm chapter 22 was one on words we read my god my god why have you forsaken me why as why are you so far from helping me from the words of my groaning jesus was reciting the psalms so the, the now the question is why did jesus recite the psalm from the mount calvary and only the first line was heard for all the people who were standing there why did jesus recite the for this psalm 22 because according to the system of jewish people during the time of jesus when they celebrate the passover meal the last in between each course of the passover meal there are certain psalms that are supposed to repeat and in fact when jesus and the disciples were celebrating the last supper they sang some psalms and prayed we read in the bible jesus and the disciples sang the hymns of psalms and they went to the mount of olives and the last psalm that they are supposed to repeat before the passover ends is psalm 22 When on Mount Calvary when Jesus was dying Jesus recited this last psalm and then Jesus said I thirst and then they gave the final cup of the Passover a small share of wine and then Jesus tasted it and then he said now it's finished it's finished means the Passover is finished with the psalm he said it's finished so my dear brothers and sisters that is why jesus prayed this prayer my god my god why have you forsaken me that is the literal meaning the reason why jesus prayed this psalm 22 and the second reason why jesus prayed this because this is the time he was carrying the sins of the whole world on mount calvary when he was hanging on the cross he was carrying the sins of the whole world that is symbolically depicted by saying the whole over the cross there was darkness surrounded the whole area the whole area was covered by darkness that is symbolically shown in the bible why because jesus was not just carrying one person sin but he was carrying the sins of the whole humanity sin is a separation from god anybody who commit sin they are trying to separate themselves from god by taking the sins of the whole world into himself jesus is experiencing the most painful separation from his heavenly father and that is why jesus prayed like this my god my god why have you forsaken me my dear brothers and sisters anyone who commits sin will experience this separation from god we feel god is far away from us and we have gone far from god and today the lord jesus is standing in front of us and telling us this is the most painful experience that i had on the mount calvary it is not the flogging it is not the crucifixion but it is the separation that is why king david prayed when he committed sin psalm 51 verse 11 we read do not cast me away from your presence lord do not take your holy spirit from me the biggest punishment i i may get is the separation do not cast me away from your presence and do not take away the holy spirit from me he cried my dear brothers and sisters today the lord is telling you and me the biggest pain we should experience when we commit sin all the other things all the other pains of this world is not a pain at all the greatest the worst pain that we should experience is when we commit sin our sins separate us from jesus our sins separate us from god and that is the biggest pain 
Let's beg for forgiveness and pardon from the Lord and say, Lord, I'm so sorry. Forgive me. Wash me with your precious blood. Let's, I looked for pity, but there was nobody. And for comforters, but I found none. And verse 21. They gave me poison for food. And for my thirst, they gave me vinegar to drink. These are the prophecies about Jesus what Jesus was going to experience on Mount Calvary. My dear brothers and sisters, our God is thirsting for you and for me. Are we, only we can satisfy the thirst of Jesus through our way of life. When we lead a good life, holy life, and that is when we are consoling Jesus, we are, full, we are satisfying the thirst of Jesus, Let's all thank the Lord and promise to Jesus this holy week. We are promising to God that we will lead a holy life. From this moment, we will promise, we promise God that we will lead a holy life.